This is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, a deduction game where you play the part of a lawyer. Because of my RSI, I can't use my DS to play this anymore, so I have to use an emulator on PC. It's been announced that it is coming to PC in early 2019, and I'm sure that the principles described here will be transferable. Your emulator will likely let you choose to lay your two screens horizontally or vertically. Which way round they go? and what size they are. When you set clicking locations, you'll need to be using the same screen layout each time you return to the game. Otherwise you'll never hit what you intend to. The game has many locations for you to tap on the touchscreen, often in the form of buttons. Most of the buttons to tap on are uniquely named, so you can save their coordinates. One exception is Present, which has three different contexts. Speaking to people during investigation, considering presenting evidence during testimony, and actually presenting evidence during testimony. So you need to give it a suffix for each situation, or use other commands. A more variable exception is when you have a list of options to choose from, such as locations to move to, topics to talk about, or answers in court. Fortunately these have screen areas in common for defining clicking. I've made macros option 1 of 1, option 1 or 2 of 2, option 1, 2 or 3 of 3, etc. in order to select these efficiently. With screenshots and maths a general formula could be made, but building these up incrementally doesn't take long. When presenting items, you'll need to pick from your profiles or evidence, which are displayed 8 at a time. After having made commands for standard buttons for left and right and confirming, it helps to have a quick command for selecting these. I say item followed by a number, and it moves the cursor to the corresponding box and clicks on it. You can make a maths formula for this, or roughly measure all eight coordinates. It takes about the same amount of time to make. Sometimes you'll need to investigate a crime scene. So you'll need a set of commands for moving the cursor slowly. For example, mouse gliding. Though you also need to click the button at the bottom to switch view to the other side of the crime scene. Continuous mouse movement becomes even more essential in the fifth story, in which you will need to rotate pieces of evidence using the touchscreen, spray luminol, and blow away dust after setting a hotkey for the microphone. A good tip for when you are setting these clicking locations is to use voice attacks functions for saving and recalling the cursor location, so that while you browse menus you don't have to lose your location in the crime scene. In court it helps to have natural responses for the witnesses, such as go on and say that again for moving through bits of testimony. The most useful thing to add is a reading loop, along the same lines as the automated page turning I've made, which sends the appropriate button, the letter X, to the computer every 3.5 seconds, which is enough time to read each bit of dialogue. There is a lot of dialogue, and it's quite a relief to not have to say yes several hundred times. Note that if you read a little slower, you'll need to increase this loop time, because you can't go back and read things you've missed. The loop includes a safeguard to make sure you don't accidentally send X just after it's sent X at the end of its loop. It does this by having a value called reading, which is set to 1 for the first second and then equal to 2. I've made a sort of timeline of the loop going across here. All of these commands will be tricky to read unless you're watching in 720p or higher, but the command yes or equivalently, what, skip, a really, okay, and so on. First checks if the value reading is equal to 2 in this period. If it's equal to that, it kills the loop, presses X, and then restarts the loop, effectively ending the loop early but not forcing you to wait a full loop when there's only one or two words to read. If it's not equal to 2, it checks if it's equal to 1, which is in the first second of the loop. If that's the case, it executes no code at all the yes is ignored. Now if neither of these are the case, it means you're not in the loop anymore, you're in normal behaviour. It says else, press x. So the yes command only behaves normally when the reading loop is inactive. When I've done enough reading, I say stop, which kills the loop and sets the value reading to zero. Altogether this allows easy reading of the copious dialogue, and lets you move forward at your own pace if you don't want to use the loop.
Overall, it's a nice way to play the game, and I get to say hold it, take that, and other lawyer phrases. Item 2. Objection. Objection! Reading mode.